In the last lesson, I challenge you to investigate a household object. Let's keep that momentum rolling, shifting our gaze from the real world to the video game world. What does the Pokeball have to teach us? Welcome to episode six of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Just like the last assignment, the goal here is to drill down deep and examine the object holistically. And I really think this starts first and foremost with what does a Pokeball do? And I think probably catch Pokemon is a good way to sum that up, but there's really more pieces to that. It starts with a trigger, right? Every, everything in a game has to have this kind of interaction quality. And in the world of Pokemon, you've got this shape that we know, but right in the center of it, it's got a trigger. So the player triggers it. They then throw the object into what I guess we could call the catch position. And then the ball opens up. It's this cool kind of clamshell shape that we're all so familiar with at this point. And when it does that, it then has this kind of magical power that sucks up the Pokemon, hopefully. And the interesting thing here is it could be a small Pokemon, a medium one, a large one. It doesn't really matter. Now, once you've caught a Pokemon... It has to be housed. That's kind of the whole idea of this, is you catch it and then you keep it. So this idea of scale variety, I think, is really crucial. We're kind of talking about a magical box here. So however the thing is designed visually, it needs to accommodate these you know, gigantic Pokemon and small Pokemon all in the same container. And so the way that it, Pokemon has handled that is they make a container that can just change size, whether it's thrown or whether it's in your hand. And then the object that is stored inside also changes size. So there's, you know, some magic and hand-waving involved, but it allows for scale variety. And then another important feature of this is that it has visible player storage. When we look at trainers in the game, we can see that they're holding Pokeballs. Same goes for the player. The player's got either a backpack or a belt. So from the very get-go, as a player, we understand you catch a Pokemon in the wild, and then you carry it around with you. And that serves as the game's inventory. Now, another thing we do with Pokeballs is we take them to the Poke Center, insert them in this cool magical machine, and then they get healed. But instead of letting the Pokemon out and, you know, giving them food or medicine of some sort, they stay in their enclosures, and then this just sort of gets it slotted into the machine. So there's this lock and key mechanism between the shape of the Pokeball and the shape of the Poke Center healing machine. Another function of Pokeballs is that they almost act like treasure chests. If you're out in the wild, you're in between towns, in another RPG, you would be very likely to find a treasure chest. Well, here, they just have this ball that we've now come to understand is sort of magic and elastic in its properties. So you could have a big item or a little item. Anything could really be hidden inside there. Well, why not use it as a treasure chest? And then once you have the idea that we like seeing Pokeballs out in the wild because they've got good stuff inside, then you can subvert expectations in a really fun way and surprise the player. And if you're not familiar with this game, there's a Pokemon just called Voltorb, and it looks a lot like a Pokeball. It's kind of like a Pokeball with an angry face. So you as the player are out in the wild, you think there's a treasure chest there, and when you go to open it, it turns out you're actually just poking one of these bad guys. Technically speaking, that's not a function of the Pokeball. But because of the consistency of the way Pokeballs are used in the world and understood by the players, you can then turn that on its head and sort of subvert expectations and really surprise players. Now, all these things so far have been tangible in-world features. But a Pokeball is actually heavily used as an interface item as well. And while the Pokeball shape is used all over as a graphic motif and a signage, I want to focus on the party status icons. Because when you're in battle, there's this little row of circles. And at a glance, this tells me so much information. It tells me that my character is holding three out of a possible of six total Pokemon. And I can see that the enemy trainer has two out of a possible six Pokemon. I can also see that two of mine are healthy, but that the middle one has already fainted. And since this battle just started, I can see that the enemy trainer's Pokemon are already both healthy. To me, this display really shows off the elegance of the Pokeball design. When it's scaled down to the size of tiny text, 
it still communicates so much information to the player. More than that, it mirrors the way that these Pokeballs are understood in the world. Because if we look at this strip of six icons, it's pretty much the player's belt. And we've already been explained very early on that you catch a Pokemon, keep it in a ball, and then if you're out in the world, you put that ball on your belt. So we have this visual parody. One references the other, and then you can give this game to a little kid, and they just understand it. You don't need to tell them how to read the interface. The story already explains to them everything they need to know. It's clear, explains itself. And this elegance continues on to the object's visual design itself, because there's really not much difference between the icon and the in-game object. It's a very, very simple shape. And if we look back at the list of things it needs to do, you could really boil a lot of this down to it's a magic box with a trigger. And if we look at the old Ghostbusters movies, they actually have a really similar prop, this ghost trap. It works in almost exactly the same way. Magic box with a trigger. But if you were to shrink down the prop for the ghost trap, it doesn't really look like anything. The Pokeball, though, you can look at it big as a game object, as a game motif, or shrink it all the way down to be a game icon and it still reads extremely clearly. So I'll stop my demo here, but know that this is a deep rabbit hole. And even if we were just talking about the Pokeball, there's a lot more to observe as long as we're looking closely. And I want you to give this exercise a try. Now, to make this video more visually engaging, I made diagrams and illustrations. You don't need to do any of that. This is purely a written assignment. But instead of a Pokeball, for your homework, I challenge you to pick a game item that you're already really familiar with. What does it tell the player? How does it interact with the player? What does it look like from a distance? A copy of this homework is available as a PDF. Just follow the link below. Be thoughtful with your homework. Don't rush. And when you're done, I'll see you in the next video.